Our max width trick is working wonders on our embedded images and videos, but sadly, the images in our views slideshow are still breaking out of their containers. This is due to some inline styles provided by Views Slideshow that are declaring static widths based on the size of our admittedly huge slide images. This is effectively overriding the flexible region that contains our slideshow and ruining our fun. But instead of pouting, let's turn back to Drupal.org's contributed modules and find a slideshow that integrates with Views and provides a responsive slideshow experience. I found a popular favorite in the form of Flex Slider module. In this lesson, we'll install and enable Flex Slider, including the JavaScript library that it relies upon. Then we'll update our view to use Flex Slider instead of View Slideshow, give it a test run, and see how it works. In no time, we'll have a refactored views-based slideshow that's responsive and doesn't break out of our flexible layout. I'm viewing the homepage of our case study website in the responsive design view of Firefox. And I wanna focus on our slideshow. Now in the last lesson, we added max width 100% to our images, embed, iframes, and objects. So all of our very common media selectors have a max width of 100%. This enables our images and these other selectors to scale with our flexible containers. The problem is with our slideshow. Our slideshow is using the View Slideshow module. And as of the time of this recording, View Slideshow inserts some static pixel-based widths in inline. So in this inline style of this container of the slide, we have this inline style that sets the width to 938 pixels. So our max width is being applied. It's just that our container is no longer flexible. So it's breaking out of our layout and it's not honoring the flexible percentage-based containers that we set up in our 960.css file. So instead of fighting against Views Slideshow, I'm just gonna swap out the module that I'm using as the display plugin for Views and use Flex Slider instead. So let's go take a look at Flex Slider module on drupal.org. You can find Flex Slider on Drupal.org at drupal.org slash project slash Flex Slider. And to install Flex Slider, we can scroll down to the installation section on the project page, and we're gonna need Libraries API, which I already have installed due to some other modules that I have going. And we need the Flex Slider library from github.com slash woo themes slash Flex Slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this library here before I install the module with Drush. On the GitHub page, in the sidebar, I'm going to click on the download zip button. And I'm gonna save this to my sites all libraries folder. I've unzipped the file and now I need to rename this flex slider hyphen master folder to all lowercase flex slider with no spaces and no capitalization. This will ensure that the module can find the library and the files that it needs inside of it. Now I can get rid of this zip file. Now I'm going to download Flex Slider using Drush by typing Drush DL Flex Slider. This will download Flex Slider to my site's all modules directory. Since I want to integrate Flex Slider with my view, I'm going to enable the Flex Slider Views module. This will also enable the dependency Flex Slider, which is the main module. Now both Flex Slider views and Flex Slider are enabled. You can also enable these through the module page in the administrative UI, but if you have Drush, this, is, this can be a quicker process. Now let's return to our browser and where I'm logged in, and now I'll edit the view that is powering this slideshow. So I'm gonna go to Structure, Views, and I'm gonna edit the home slideshow. Now currently the format being used is slideshow which is powered by the Views Slideshow module. So I'm gonna change this to Flex Slider and apply all displays since I just have the one block here. There's some additional settings that I'm not going to worry about because I'm just going to use the defaults, but there are some extra options in Flex Slider that you may want to explore. All right, now we have Flex Slider enabled. The picture is quite distorted, but let's go ahead and save this for now and see what we need to change. 
Now our flex slider slideshow is stretching out the image to the full width of the container. So it's a responsive slideshow and it's going to fill the container that it's in. We also have some residual extra border issues happening because of the way that we styled the other slideshow and we used the selector that was based on the name of the view. So that's still being applied. So we have some stretching issues and some distortion because our original images weren't big enough. And Flex Slider is trying to be helpful by providing this responsive slideshow that's filling up the entire container. But let's inspect this slide and see what else is going on and what kind of cleanup we need to do here before we decide if this is really a problem we need to address. I'm actually gonna take a look at this slideshow in the responsive design view of Firefox. And as you can see, it, it really sized it up. So if I inspect this element, you can see that the image width is 920, but if I inspect the layout, it's really being stretched out to 1241 pixels. So unless I upload a larger image that will fill the maximum width of the container, which is quite large, I'm always going to have this distorted image. Now, that is certainly a problem that can be solved. We could set a maximum width of this whole page container so that it doesn't exceed a certain width. And we could ensure that the images that are uploaded to the slideshow all have a uniform dimension and are no smaller than the maximum width of this container. But I don't have any of those qualifications in place. I don't have a maximum width. This image is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger with the larger and larger screens. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to change where this slideshow is placed. Instead of placing it in a full width 12 grid container, I'm going to put it in a grid six. So the market locations and the market map blocks are currently in grid six. I'm gonna move the schedule table and the slideshow both into grid six, which is the footer left and right regions, so that we don't have this distorted image problem in our slideshow. So let's head back over to Chrome where I'm logged in and I'm gonna to go to the blocks administration page by navigating to structure, blocks, and here, are our blocks in the footer regions. And we have several footer regions, footer left and right, which are the grid sixes, and the footer bottom, which is the grid twelves. So I'm gonna move the market music schedules block, which is that table of music schedules, below the market locations in the footer left region. Then I'm gonna move our slideshow into the footer right, right below the market map. Now I'll save our blocks and navigate back to the home page. Now our slideshow is going to be much less likely to exceed the width of our image, which is 920. We can keep everything the same. There's still a little bit of distortion. And so maybe what we will need to do is play with the height a little bit so that there isn't that distortion. But first, let's inspect this page and see how our grid sixes are responding as the viewport narrows. So I'm gonna head back over to Firefox in a responsive design view. I'll refresh the page. We've got our four grid six regions here and let's see how they do when I resize this viewport. Things are starting to get a little bit squishy and distorted as I narrow this viewport. Our table is starting to be quite stubborn and now our slideshow is overlapping the table. Our slideshow is responding in width, but the height is very much distorted and things aren't looking right. Our map is doing okay, but it's really starting to get too narrow to be comfortable. So whereas our sidebar is doing fine, our content region and our sidebar, our header, our navigation are all doing fine, our grid sixes seem to cry out for a new media query that addresses this new breakpoint because we are definitely seeing some breaking happening here. So if I widen this out a little bit, once I get to, and I'm looking at this dimension box right here that's changing as I'm resizing this viewport. Once I get to around, I don't know, 1260 or so, that's when the table starts to shift things start to shift and get a little squishy and uncomfortable. So let's set a new breakpoint 
of 1260 for our grid sixes. In our 960.css file, we already have some media queries set up to respond to the container, the content containers, and the sidebar. So we have that all set up, but we really have a simplistic set of media queries right now. And in our mobile and small tablet media query with a max width of 750 pixels, we've taken all of the grids and just expanded them out to virtually 100%, 97.91666%, and that's because of the gutters, and we're just stacking them all. So on the tablet and desktop, we also have a media query for tablet and desktop, which just picks up right where the small mobile media query left off at a minimum width of 751 pixels. And right now, our grid six, which is right here, our container 12 grid six has a width of 47%. What we wanna do is add an additional breakpoint at 1260 pixels. So in between 751 and 1260 pixels, we want this grid six to actually expand out to the full width of the container. So we're gonna change this from 47.91666% to 97.916%. And this is going to expand our grid sixes out to the full width of that container 12 and stack them up so that we don't have that uncomfortable squishiness that we currently have. Now we need to add an additional media query to take care of the 1260 and up where we do want our grid sixes side by side as they were before. Now I'm gonna find the end of my tablet and desktop media query and start a new section here and a new media query. So we'll do at media screen and a min width of 1260 pixels. Open up the curly braces and we're gonna target our container 12 grid sixes. Open up another pair of curly braces and now we'll put in our width of 47.91666%. I'll save this and head back into Firefox and let's refresh the page. Now we have grid sixes side by side and if we keep an eye on our dimensions in the corner here, as I resize and we get close, here's 1260, now our grid sixes extend the full width of our container, which is about 97%. So we've got full width market locations, full width schedules, full width map, and full width slideshow. And our slideshow is actually faring pretty well, even at this full width and we don't have the distortion that we had before. And we have a little bit of a distortion here, so we need to get to the bottom of that. Now if we take a look at our site at a phone width, everything is stacking up pretty well, except for our table is not stacking up very well. And our slideshow still needs a little bit of love here. So let's inspect this and see what we need to do. We have the max width, but the height is really out of whack. We also have this extra border here, and it looks like we've got a selector of the view home slideshow targeting the image. We've got this border, let's get rid of that, and this background, let's get rid of that. We also have this fixed padding right here. So we can actually get rid of that altogether. We don't need that anymore. And what if we added to this selector a height of auto? Aha. That helps a lot. So now our slide isn't so distorted, especially when it comes to the width. Let me expand this viewport out. And now even at, at any width, that slideshow is looking proportional and not distorted at all. So that's what we needed to do was set a height rather of auto to our images in our slideshow. Now, when we narrow this down to the phone width, what's breaking is our table, but our slideshow is no longer distorted. It's sizing with the window, and we can see the full image without any distortion at any width, or height for that matter. 
So in this lesson, we swapped out the module that we're using for the slideshow from View Slideshow to Flex Slider. We needed to set the height to auto in our images for our slideshow so that we didn't have any distortion. We noticed that our slides could get really, really big in our container 12. So we moved our schedules and our slideshow to a new region, which is only a grid six. And that grid six isn't gonna go any wider than 1260 pixels because we added a new breakpoint. So now our slideshow has a cozier home. It's a little more comfortable given the size of the images. If we wanted to pursue a full width slideshow at all times, then we would need to really rethink the dimensions and cropping of the images that we originally uploaded and maybe do without an image style altogether and just control it in pre-processing of the image. There are other image styles that come with FlexLighter, but I was just able to use the original one that I had set up before without changing it.